Today I wanted to bring you all a video on the tribe of Ephraim. I know I had a lot of questions about Ephraim and I still do, but I hope to share some of the things I've been learning with you. And I know there are a lot of people who are descendants of Ephraim, I myself included, as stated in my patriarchal blessing. So I hope this interests you, but I hope it will also bless you and help you. To start off the discussion about Ephraim, we have to talk about birthrights. Now, under the Bible Dictionary and Firstborn, we learned a little bit about this. Ephraim, throughout the scriptures, is declared to have the birthright in Israel. In the patriarchal order, the firstborn son is the heir and inherits the leadership of the family upon the death of the father. This is often spoken of in the scriptures as birthright. Under the law of Moses, the firstborn son was regarded as belonging to God, and special ordinances were provided for his redemption. The eldest son received, or the birthright son, a double portion of his father's possessions, and after his father's death, he was responsible for the care of the mother and sisters. Joseph, though not the firstborn of Jacob, received the inheritance as though he were the firstborn, as also did Ephraim. Ephraim was given the birthright in Israel, and in the last days it has been the tribe of Ephraim's privilege first to bear the message of the restoration of the gospel to the world and to gather scattered Israel. The time will come when, through the operation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the envy of Judah and Ephraim shall cease. So we see that Ephraim has the birthright in Israel, that it is Ephraim's job to care for the family. Just like it says the eldest son received a double portion, but he also received greater responsibilities to care for the mother and sisters or the family. We know Ephraim is responsible for gathering Israel primarily. We also see something very interesting when we look at Genesis 37, um, 5 through 10, Joseph of Egypt has a dream and he relates this dream to his family but they aren't very happy about it. Let's read it. And Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? So we see that this dream is fulfilled in Joseph's life. When his brothers and his parents bow down during the famine and receive a wonderful inheritance in Goshen, but also receive food that saves their lives, they bow down to Joseph of Egypt. But this will have a second fulfillment with the birthright son of Joseph in Ephraim. If we read in DNC 133, speaking of the lost ten tribes coming forth, and they, and they shall bring forth their rich treasures unto the children of Ephraim, my servants, and the boundaries of the everlasting hills shall tremble at their presence. And there shall they fall down and be crowned with glory, even in Zion, by the hands of the servants of the Lord, even the children of Ephraim. And they shall be filled with the songs of everlasting joy, 
Behold, this is the blessing of the everlasting God upon the tribes of Israel, the richer blessing upon the head of Ephraim and his fellows. So Ephraim again will have the other tribes bow down to him and he will bless them and give crown them with glory. They will fall down and be crowned with glory before Ephraim. Very interesting and what amazing blessings. If you're from the tribe of Ephraim, this can be yours. And it's not exclusively um, entirely confined to Ephraim because it says the richer Ephraim, uh, the richer blessings upon the head of Ephraim and his fellows. But it is fulfilling this dream and this prophecy once more of Joseph of Egypt. In Isaiah 49.23 or 1 Nephi 21.23, it mentions certain kings and queens. Let's read about them and relate them to um, what the topic we're talking about. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. So, this is speaking to Israel, those who are not gathered in, that they will be gathered, that they will be succored by these kings and nursed by these queens. Who are these kings and queens? Well, we learn in the temple that we are anointed to become kings and queens if we are faithful. And that is the right of Ephraim to hold and bear the holy priesthood, the higher priesthood, the keys, and the leadership in that in these last days. The kings and queens will be the men and women of Ephraim who have kept their covenants and lived righteously and taken the Holy Spirit as their guide. And they will be those who gather in Israel, into Zion, into the church of the firstborn. Well, at least into the, into the New Jerusalem, which is comprised of people who are of the church of the firstborn. We know the 144,000 will be gathering in to the church of the firstborn. Um, but, and they, there will be 12,000 from the tribe of Ephraim in that effort. But let's look at what it says in the, um, Institute student manual about this verse. Nephi explained that the Lord would raise up a Gentile nation to nurse scattered Israel. As part of the fulfillment of this prophecy, the gospel was restored in the United States of America, a Gentile nation. The gospel is the Lord's standard to the people, restoring the new and everlasting covenant to the children of men, and feeding the need of a spiritually famished Israel, scattered throughout the world. The analogy of the restoration of the gospel is that of a feast of fat things taken to the world to nurse them to spiritual health. We know that we are classified in the Doctrine and Covenants and in the Book of Mormon as Gentiles, Joseph Smith said, even though we know he's a descendant of Ephraim, we, a descendant of Joseph, we know that he also said that we are titled or classed among the Gentiles. So we live among the Gentiles and we have Gentile ways. We are classed as Gentiles, but we do have some of us and I would dare say the majority of us direct descendancy some at some point on our line if we are of the tribe of Ephraim declared in our patriarchal blessing that we are literal descendants. We have the blood of Israel in us. And it seems that the um, early church presidents and church um, apostles, leaders have stated that. Now Ephraim, with this great responsibility and great blessing, or great blessing, there is also great expectation. So 
In DNC 64, we read a little bit about that expectation. Wherefore, be not weary in well doing, for ye are laying the foundation of a great work, and out of small things proceedeth that which is great. Behold, the Lord requireth the heart and a willing mind, and the willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land of Zion in these last days. And the rebellious shall be cut off out of the land of Zion, and shall be sent away, and shall not inherit the land. For verily I say that the rebellious are not of the blood of Ephraim, wherefore they shall be plucked out. So the Lord expects us to not weary in well-doing, and to have a willing heart and a willing mind, and to be obedient, and that we are purged of rebellion. The sins of rebellion are much greater than sins of weakness. I've been learning that from um, a lot of different places, but if you check out the um, the two, or it used to be called the LDS archives, the two, I believe, um, with Micah English, he teaches um, amazing things um, about that, or he has some amazing papers, I should say, about that. He really teaches um, using always the scriptures, so check him out. I'm, I'll try to leave a link to that in the comments. In Obadiah 1.21, we read, And the Savior's shall come upon Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. So you'll see as well throughout the scriptures that Ephraim is expected to be a savior. Those who are of the blood of Ephraim are accepted or ex expected to be saviors upon Mount Zion. This amazing talk by Apostle Erastus Snow. I have another video where I read the entire talk, but this is just a segment of it about the tribe of Ephraim. While the tribe of Levi, unto which Moses and Aaron belonged, was especially charged with the administration of affairs of the lesser priesthood under the law, yet Ephraim, the peculiar and chosen son of Joseph, was the one whom the Lord had named by his own mouth and through the prophets to inherit the keys of the presidency of the, this high priesthood after the order of the Son of God. The calling and mission of the Latter-day Saints, Ephraim and his associates, I've added that, are to fulfill what is here promised in these scriptures, to bring about the restoration of scattered Israel, the establishment of Zion, and preaching, uh, preparing a people for the coming of Christ, a people who are to be saviors upon Mount Zion, and thus fulfilling one of the prophecies of one of the Jewish prophets concerning the Zion of the latter days, that Savior should come upon Mount Zion to save the house of Esau, but the kingdom should be the Lord's. We also see many warnings in the scriptures um, about the tribe of Ephraim. Isaiah 28 is referred to often as the drunkards of Ephraim. It's basically dedicated to the tribe of Ephraim and the expectation of these of the Ephraimites in both their time and the latter days, dualistic prophecy. Isaiah 28, 1 and 9, I will read, but you should read the whole chapter to get the full dose. Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. We are expected to be weaned from the milk. We have to have a claim on the meat of the gospel. We have to have a greater understanding. We have to have the spirit of prophecy and other spiritual gifts. We're expected to live the gospel, to keep our covenants, to receive the mysteries of God, because if we keep the commandments, we're told 
we will receive the mysteries of God if we want them. And if we truly are keeping the commandments, we will want them. Second Nephi 27, we read, For behold, all ye that doeth iniquity, stay yourselves and wonder, for ye shall cry out and cry. Yea, ye shall be drunken, but not with wine. Ye shall stagger, but not with strong drink. For behold, the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. For behold, ye have closed your eyes, and ye have rejected the prophets and your rulers, and the seers hath he covered because of your iniquity. So this is the dire warning to Ephraim, to not fall asleep, just like um, was, I believe it was um, President Uchtdorf, he was in the first presidency at that time, who stated that, are we, or he asked the question, are you sleeping through the restoration? This is a call to Ephraim to wake up the gospel, Isaiah, the Book of Mormon. They're calling for Ephraim to awake and claim this wonderful tribal heritage of bringing the gospel to the world, of establishing the new Jerusalem, and doing all these amazing things. I truly hope that we will live up to our tribal inheritance, and I know that God has blessed us, that Jesus Christ is our Savior, and He will help us in our weakness if we humble ourselves and have faith in Him, that we can honor this tribal inheritance, and we can become all that we were made to be. I know this, and I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.